start by showing you tracheostomy suction. I just washed my hands. I provided privacy with a curtain behind me. I'm going to first identify my patient and introduce myself. Hi, I'm April, I'm gonna be your nurse. I'm gonna be performing tracheostomy suction on you, but first I need to confirm your name and date of birth and any allergies you might have. So I am going to check those things against the MAR and the patient will verbalize to me their name, date of birth, and their allergies. And as well as I'm checking the band on their wrist to make sure everything matches. My order would state that I need to do tracheostomy suction and what indicators, maybe it's a PRN order, but I need to make sure that I have that order before I ever perform any procedure on the patient. Before I begin, I need to start by assessing my patient always. This is the most important step because if my patient doesn't need suctioning, then I'm performing a skill on them that doesn't need to be performed and I could inadvertently hurt the patient in some way. So I need to make sure that I get a set of vitals and that I put a pulse oximeter on the patient. This will help me identify if the patient's decompensated in any way and give me a baseline before I begin the procedure. I'm going to perform a physical assessment on my patient. So once I'm ready to do that, I need to wash off my stethoscope. I'm going to perform hand hygiene. I'm going to put on gloves. Sir, I'm going to be listening to your lungs. I'm going to go underneath the patient's gown. Take a deep breath, in and out. Take a deep breath, in and out. Excellent. What I'm listening for is adventitious sounds. What I expect to hear are some coarse sounds or wet sounds. I would also listen to the back of the patient. I want to make sure that I'm not performing this skill if the patient doesn't need it. So make sure that when you're assessing your patient, the assessment lines up with the order that you received. The next step with tracheostomy suctioning is setting up the equipment. So we need to make sure that our equipment is ready to go before we even open our kit. But we have to set up the oxygen and the suction by turning on the jacuzzi timer, which is over to the right. And we just give it a quick turn. That'll give us access to oxygen and suction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hyperoxygenate the patient before I start the procedure. When setting up the suction, you need to make sure that the regulator is turned to regular. You're going to Take your suction tubing and you're going to look at the top of the canister and make sure all of the ports are closed. If they're not, you won't be able to do suction. So then when I see that all of the ports and caps are on, I'm going to kink the tubing and I'm going to adjust my suction to be between 100 and 150. Okay, now I know I have suction ready. My patient has a little bit of boost of oxygen. I hyperoxygenated them per my order. And I'm gonna place this catheter tubing right here next to me so I'm ready to do my procedure. For purposes of this skill, I'm gonna shut off this jacuzzi timer because it's loud. And I'm going to raise the bed to a comfortable working height for myself. I'm gonna make sure the patient's at a 30 to 45 degree angle. I'm going to put the bed rail down. This will help me avoid contaminating inadvertently while I'm doing the procedure.
I'm gonna be also talking to my patient through this. Mr. Jones, how you doing? I'm gonna place this towel underneath you so that if any secretions come out, that you're not gonna soil your gown. I'm also going to lift this pillow out behind your head so that I have full access to your tracheostomy site. And I'll place that back when we're done. If at any time you are uncomfortable, please let me know and I will stop the procedure. For this procedure, we're gonna be using a suction catheter kit and we're gonna be using normal saline. For purposes of this skill, this is a brand new bottle, but if I were to open it and I wanted to reuse it, I would date, label um, the time and date and discard within 24 hours. So after I have washed my hands again, I will be opening my kit. I'm also making sure that the expiration date is noted and that the packaging is intact and not soiled. Once I open my kit, you'll see that I have gloves on top, which I'm going to remove, but everything in this kit is sterile now. So I can't touch it unless I have on sterile gloves. I'm now ready to open up my gloves. I'm gonna make sure that I fold the top flap back, make a little crease so that it doesn't fold back up on me and the bottom flap. And then I'm going to be sure that I'm only touching my one inch border. I also need to be making sure that I'm not overlapping my gloves to touch my sterile field. I'm going to grab the inside cuff and place my hand inside. And then I can grab the outer cuff. Place my hand inside. Just being careful that I'm not touching my hand at any point. Okay, so now I have my sterile gloves on. Be sure to keep your hands above your waist level. If they drop below your waist level, you have now contaminated your site. I pre-loosened the cap on my saline bottle and now I'm ready to open up my container and put it on the table. Now, as I am touching this bottle, I'm becoming unsterile with my left non-dominant hand. So I'm gonna take off the top. I'm going to pour the saline into the container about six inches away from the container on the table. Next, I'm going to attach my catheter to my suction tubing. I cannot touch this hand to my sterile hand. So I can grab this suction tubing and I'm gonna add it to my catheter. And now I'm ready to perform the procedure. So first I need to test my catheter and make sure that it has suction. And I'm going to use my non-dominant, non-sterile hand to apply pressure and get suction. You'll hear a gurgling sound in the tube you don't hear it now because my suction's not on. I've cleared the catheter. Now I'm going to turn to my patient and say, Mr. Jones, I'm about to suction you. Do you have any questions? Or are you okay with me proceeding? And he'll say yes or no. Okay, you're ready to go. So I'm going to remove the oxygen with my non-dominant hand, and I'm going to do one pass, keeping my elbows up, 
and keeping my catheter sterile. Inserting until I meet resistance. And then I'm going to suction intermittently up to 10 seconds, twisting on the way out. I'm going to place the oxygen back on Mr. Jones. And then I'm going to let him reoxygenate for 30 to 60 seconds. I'm going to clear my tubing. Make sure that there's no secretions clogging my tubing. I'm going to observe my oxygen saturation and what my patient looks like. Is he ready for another pass or does he look like he needs more time? If his SATs are greater than 92 or whatever your hospital protocol is, you would go by that and whatever your patient's stating. So now I'm going to remove the oxygen again, do one more pass. I'm going to keep my elbows up, noting that I'm not touching anything with my sterile gloves or hands. I'm going to insert the catheter. I've met resistance. I'm going to intermittently twist and suction out and replace the oxygen for Mr. Jones. Now I'm going to wrap my tubing, disconnect, and place this in the trash. I'm going to Clean my hands, observe my patient's respiratory status, look at the oxygenation level, and then I'm going to reassess his lungs. I'm now going to turn the oxygen back down to baseline, and I'm going to turn the suction off so that it's no longer um, giving suction because we're not using it anymore. Now that I've reassessed my patient, we're all done, I'm going to leave the patient in a comfortable position. So I want to take out the towel, discard that, and put that in the linens. I'm going to put the pillow back. I'm going to put my side rails up, lower the bed, and make sure that the patient has their call light.